Hello, and welcome to today's show, Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, international leadership expert and trusted advisor. Welcome to Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm so delighted that you joined me today. I have a very special guest on our show. Her name is Stacy Johnston. I know you will enjoy meeting her, and I just know you'll be inspired by our conversation today. Stacy Johnston is the owner and operator of Enlighten Up. I just love the name of her business, don't you? Enlighten Up is a personal consulting firm based in Texas. Her focus is to illuminate the magic of you. Stacy is joining us today from Texas, where she lives with her husband of 37 years. She is a mom to three beautiful children and grandmother to six. Stacy is an internationally certified personal development coach, consultant, speaker, and trainer. She works with individuals, families, companies, and communities to recognize the power of their influence and the importance of the legacy they create in their lives. Now, Stacy grew up in a dance studio family, and in her own words, she says, I was blessed to enjoy the beautiful world of the arts all my life. In fact, Stacy owned and operated Applause School of Dance for 30 years. Then she took a pivot and served in the adolescent and adult substance abuse and mental health profession as a family services specialist. She served there for 11 years. Her new joy is co-hosting two podcasts, Uncaped Heroes and Midweek Mind Candy. Today's topic is Enlighten Up, a topic that is near and dear to my heart, and I can't think of a better person, a better leader, a better human being to address this topic than Stacy. I met Stacy several years ago when I was attending an international Maxwell certification conference in Orlando, Florida. When I met her, I just knew there was something extra special about Stacy. And whenever I had an opportunity to have a simple conversation with her, she spoke so passionately about the people she worked with as a family services specialist. Stacy rarely said anything about herself, but I could tell she was serving from her core. In fact, she was standing in the fire of her purpose. So I can't wait to host this very special, amazing, and lovely human being, my friend, colleague, and mentor, Stacy Johnston. Now, before I bring her on, I just want to take a minute, just a moment, to connect the dots between today's topic on Enlighten Up and Legacy Living. There are many ways that Enlighten Up connects to Legacy Living which you will hear more about later. But for now, let me just say that legacy living is a way of being. It's a way of living and moving through the world so that we make the conscious choice to be the difference we want to see in the world. And we make that conscious choice right here and right now, not way off in some distant future. We make that conscious choice day in and day out. 365, 24-7. Okay? All right, more about that later. Now, let me introduce you to my friend and colleague and mentor, Stacy. Hello, Stacy. I want to welcome you as a guest to my podcast. Uh, this is just such a blessing to have you on. And I would love to uh, introduce you to my listeners. Well, welcome. Hello, I'm Stacy Johnson, and I am so very glad to be here sharing this space with you today. 
Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. So I know that you have done so much in your in your life and in your work. And I would really like to talk with you today about your, I'm going to call it a ministry, uh, about Enlighten Up. So can you talk to us a little bit, Stacy, about what is what is that? I would I would love to talk to you about Enlighten Up. In Enlighten Up is the business that I run. I am a personal development, business development coach, mm. speaker, teacher, trainer, whatever your need might be. I'll see where I can't find a place to fill that shoe for you mm -hmm. in any way. Um, and Enlighten Up really comes, the concept of all of it comes from my experience as a dancer. Um, it, it's where a lot of it comes from. And, and so much that I learned there kind of opened that door. I, over the past 30 years, many times the word light has come into what I'm doing and a, a name of something I have. So it was only natural that that be my path. Mm. So at Enlighten Up, my job is to illuminate your magic. I, I think that you were, God looked down one day and decided the world needed one of you. And there's an amazing reason why. Mm. And when you believe that and you turn that light on that you have inside, girl, the light that shines is beautiful. And then you believe in the magic of you. And then you're, it's unstoppable. The world is your stage, right? Well, I love that. And I did not know that you had a background in dance. And I would, i uh, just uh, curious about that. If you could tell our listeners a little bit more about your foundation. Absolutely. I grew up as a dancer. My mother was a dance teacher. My father was a dance lover. So I grew up in a dance household. We were all about dance recitals and costumes and props and rehearsals and competitions and lots and lots of music. Oh my goodness. Uh, and we had a wonderful time. I, my dad was a realtor and so we had great time and we did it all as a family. And mm -hmm. uh, like when the country and Western craze hit and urban cowboy came out, I bet my mom and dad taught 2000 people how to do the two step. Oh my goodness, right. that's amazing. And so it was fun. And, and Urban Cowboy had its own disco craze, right? Then we mm -hmm. did the disco. So I grew up as a dancer, I uh, danced professionally for several years mm -hmm. and then spent about 35 years as a dance instructor and coach. So what kind of dance did you focus on or uh, uh, love you know, to do, Stacey? Ballet is the basis of all of it, right? Everything comes from ballet, your poise, your grace, your center of balance. But I, my friend, am a tap dancer at heart. Mm. Uh, I love the rhythm. It, it's a song all by itself with no music if it's right. Yes. And uh, yes. I, I, life is a rhythm, right? And life has a song to sing and we are life. Mm. So we have a rhythm. So I love it. I, I had one after I retired, I saw a lady one day and she said, at the time I was working for the state of New Mexico as a family mm -hmm. services specialist, mm -hmm. working with adolescent and adult behavioral health and substance abuse. And she said, oh, are, are you not sad that you're not still dancing? And I said, you know, I am dancing because everybody's life has a song. Yes. And so I go over here and I dance to these songs over here and then I come out, shake it off. And then I go over here and I get to dance to the song that these people play. So I'm still dancing. I just have a different stage. Yes, absolutely. I love that. <laughs> so Stacey, I want to circle back to something you said earlier. And you talked about how each one of us has that magic within us. And can you say a little bit more about that? What does that mean to you? That means, Gloria, that I do believe you have something only you were put here to do. Mm. And everything that you learn, everything that you experience leads you to that place, to that thing that you were supposed to do. Mm. And so that whatever that is, and some people find it when they're 10 and some people find it when they're 75. Mm -hmm. and, and it's about the journey. It's not a destination. Mm -hmm. Mm. And I, right, I think everything, everything I know right up to this moment has got me ready for the next moment I'm going to face. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we have a special genius inside of us is one of the ways that I talk about it. And it sounds yes. like you're talking about the same thing. I, I am. You have this, you have this person inside of you. That's your rhythm. Yes. That's, that's what makes your song sing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you understand that, then you know how you like your eggs and what your favorite cartoon is and how you feel about love and respect and, and failure and success. And nobody gets to take that from you because those are, that's you, that's who you are. And I think the biggest challenge that we face in the world today is deciding who is Gloria. Hmm. What kind of wife are you going to be? What kind of mother are you? What kind of friend are you? Hmm. What kind of mentor are you? And then being able to maintain that hmm. in spite of what the world would have you be. Yes. 
Yes, because the world wants to tug us in all different directions. And yeah, we're made yes. for we're made for other things. <laughs> we are. And, you know, we as a people, Gloria, we gravitate toward light. Whatever it is, they're, they're the parties over there. The lights yes. are on over there. Even our advertising is we'll leave the light on for you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so just as a society, we gravitate toward and as people, we do the same thing. And we feel this energy or this light coming from an individual or a, or a teaching or a thought or a platform. And we gravitate toward that energy yes. and we feed on it. We're like, yes, I get, I love this light. And then they turn their light off and we get insulted and we go, no, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I was feeding on that light. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> right. And so we own that disappointment and then we just seek out another light. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And so the magic of you is recognizing that the light that you are searching for is inside you. Mm -hmm. And when you can turn that light on, then everything you need draws to you like fish to a night globe. Yeah. Right? Like moss to the flame, as they would say. Yes. And then you can attract that. But you have to believe in that light first. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. So I want to just pivot a little bit here and talk a little bit about your broadcast ministry. And uh, I know that you have two things going on right now, at least two. <laughs> <laughs> Could you talk with us a little bit about your Uncaped Heroes podcast? I would love to talk about that. Uncaped Heroes is, um, it, it, right now, it's currently my favorite thing to do mm. in my time. That's what I love doing. It's magic for me. Uh, I started the podcast about a year ago with a gentleman named Boyd Hamlin. Mm -hmm. He came on as my co-host. Boyd wrote a beautiful program for youth development, character and integrity for children in, in any way you can possibly use it. And so he called me one day and he said, let's do a podcast and turn this into grownups because the kids got to see the grownups live it. And I said, let's do it. So Absolutely. we decided to do this podcast called The Hero Builder. And then he made a pivot in his life and he met some amazing people and the hero builder has began to breathe and, and live over here. So we separated from the hero builder and became the everyday heroes. So the mm -hmm. hero builder could have its life. Mm -hmm. And uh, as it has progressed, it is going to continue to eat up more and more of his lovely time. All his prayers are coming true. It's the funnest thing to watch. And so as he's done that, we're going to rebrand again, June 1. And we're going to become uncaped heroes. Mm -hmm. And my daughter is going to become a new podcast co-host. Oh, good. And that's such a joy for me. Yes. Yes. And, uh, and Boyd is going to continue on with, uh, with Hero Builder and bless children all around the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, the premise of uncaped heroes, when we decided to do the podcast, Lori, we decided there were 126,000 podcasts the day we looked at it. Mm-hmm. And we thought, okay, now what's going to set us apart from 126,000 other people? Mm, mm -hmm. So we started listening. And what we found is that a lot of them, there's beautiful information out there. Lots of people have lots of beautiful wisdom to share. But so many of them have either a specific theme, a track they're on, uh, they're, they're a way to a sale, they're, they're something else, or you don't want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And so where was that gap? And what mm. we saw, we said, what's happening in the world right now? So we saw the gap being in a clear understanding of character and integrity. Mm -hmm. And so that was the premise of let's, let's find people from all over the world and let's find out wh what was their journey, who inspired them, what did they learn, what is their wisdom, and how can we share that? And so that's what we do. We have had the privilege of traveling all over the world from Israel to Egypt to Australia to the UK to, to Texas. And we've talked to the most beautiful people. They do the most beautiful things for mankind. And they, they're giving people permission to get better, to have a space to go, you know, I understand that. Mm -hmm. And it seems like right now people need permission to do a lot of things. Yeah. And so there's a lot of people out there open in that space. And so we're, we're sharing that space. We're letting you know who's out there to make your life better and who inspired them. And what's the wisdom from your grandparents? Mm. Well, thank you for doing that work with Boyd and eventually with your daughter. It sounds like very soon she's going to be in the same same seat. You know, so many people are hurting and suffering, not only during this pandemic, but before, <laughs> before we right. even had the pandemic. And so having that place of inspiration and light is so, so necessary right now. Well, hope is universal. 
wisdom is universal. It doesn't yes. have a gender or a color or a location or a community. Yes. It is, it's, and we're all just walking each other home. Shouldn't we do it hand in hand? Mm. Oh, I love that, Stacy. Thank you. Hand in hand, uh, walking each other home. <laughs> amen. Yeah. So I know that you have uh, another podcast. And uh, could you tell us about uh, Midweek Mind Candy? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So mind candy is a phrase that we use for something for you to think about for a minute, like a good piece of hard candy or an all day sucker. Mm. Right? Takes a minute to digest that. And so that's what this information is. And we do it on Wednesday and we take an individual word that is an attribute of character and integrity and legacy. And we banter that word. How do you model that word? How do you verb that so that people see that? Because that's your legacy. That's the story that you leave behind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we don't, if we don't model it. So we've had the most wonderful conversations with people about words and we're learning how many ways one word can be defined. Yes. Right. And, and it's very important how we use those words and when we're communicating with people, because just how you say it has a very different meaning sometimes. So Absolutely. The, the wisdom is beautiful. And so are you working and talking with people from around the world on this podcast as well? Stacey? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's fun. That every time we talk to somebody about being on the podcast, we go, so you want to play another way? <laughs> we have another one so yeah. we're, yeah, it's a lot of fun to hear the conversations and I've really enjoyed the conversations we have between the generations mm. we we bantered the word grace with a young man that was 30 mm -hmm. and to hear his concept of grace as one of those people so many people are afraid of right the, oh my gosh the awful millennials and they're so beautiful Right, they have so much information, and I think we're scared of them. Is what I think. Right, yeah. that's it. They yeah. have so much information that we didn't even understand, Absolutely. but they need our wisdom. Absolutely. Right? And so when we bantered the word grace, and we heard this beautiful concept of this thirty-five-year-old's concept of grace, we came to the conclusion that it's the third step in forgiveness. Mm. There's accepting an apology, mm. and then there's forgiveness, mm. and then there's grace. Mm. And grace is what we all want. Right. And it's hard to offer to other people complete. And it's very hard to offer to ourselves. Yes, absolutely. Right. Until you can offer yourself grace, it's almost impossible to offer it to anyone else with any clear else. understanding. That's right. And so those are the conversations that we get to have. So if you would uh, like to banter a word with us, Miss Gloria, we would love to have you. <laughs> well, you know, I love words. So <laughs> I would be happy to do that. And I, I think about how we use the word mentor, for example. There's another word for you. And yeah. oftentimes we think about somebody older than us, but the young people have something to offer uh, everyone as well. And so I like to think of mentors as people of all ages, all generations, all walks of life. Life. we can all learn something from everyone right yeah. i agree yeah and you know just like you and i both have learned for a mentor that we both share leadership is influence it's not who you are it's not how much money you make right, that's right. it's your ability to influence those around that's you right. so absolutely. that's the five-year-old or the 80-year-old or somebody in between yes absolutely yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I love your ministries and uh, thank you for sharing about your podcasts, Stacey. I know that you have written a part of a book and I want you to tell our listeners about that. What is Caged No More? Wow. Caged No More is a very new and exciting journey that I was invited to join. Mm -hmm. I got a, an email from a lady one day and she said, Please don't take this as creepy, but I've been scoping you out on Facebook. I really love your energy and you and I should have a conversation. Mm. And so she called and we had a conversation about this book she wanted to write. And her goal was 16 to 20 women mm -hmm. to co-author a book about the moment they recognize the magic in themselves, right? The moment they became uncaged from the constraints of society or trauma or fear or whatever it was that was holding them back mm. that moment they broke free so in this book will be 16 stories mm -hmm. of of coming out right of, of that of that uncaged we i believe we launched july the 30th mm -hmm. uh and it is uh 16 amazing women from all around the world 
And so it has been quite an experience, right? So nervous the other day when I hit that button, had to turn into my chapter. I was like, oh, there's no going back once I hit the button. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, telling your story is so powerful, not only for you, but for all the people whose lives you're going to impact. Yeah, amen. You know, I think we never know who might hear our story that needs to hear it that day or whose life it might touch or change. That's right. And, you know, I always say it's not our business to know. Our yeah. business is to show up and to tell our stories and to, uh, to shine the light. Somebody out there needs that. They need that light. They need those life affirming yeah. words. Yeah. They do. They yeah. do. So may they fall upon the ears that need them. Absolutely. Well, I yeah. wish you well with your book. I'm not going to wish you luck because you don't need luck. <laughs> well, thank <laughs> but, you very uh, much. I can't wait to get my hands on a copy of it. Thank you very much. It'll be super fun. And though I think all the proceeds are going to charity mm -hmm. and uh, which makes it even better. It's going to be fun to watch it. Bless other people all around. Yes, in many ways. absolutely. Now, you mentioned the word gap a little bit earlier, Stacy, and I, I'm going to ask you to just fill us in a little bit more about what you're thinking. Uh, in terms of where our culture is today, society is today, where do you see the gap? And what's, what's missing or, or muted for you? You know, I think, hmm, I ask this question all the time, right on my interviews. It's one of the questions that we ask is where people see the gap. And I, I love the answers that we get, but I think, I think for me, it's in, it's in the wisdom of my grandparents, mm -hmm. right? Where did that stop getting moved along, mm -hmm. right? We all had these people in our lives that had this moral line, this character, this ethic, this right and wrong, this good and bad, this total line, earn your keep we had that and we, we grew up with that and we honored that and we believed in that. And when we do these interviews, 94% of the time, that's who these people, that's who their heroes are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's my grandma. It's my mom. It's my uncle John. It's my third grade Sunday school teacher, right? These ordinary people that do extraordinary things for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's, what's missing in all this information that we got out there, mm. right? There's so much chatter, and so I think the gap is in, the gap is in, I think probably the other thing that I talked about, what's underneath the music. Yes. That's, that's the gap for me. Yes. Um, and where, where did that wisdom go? As I, I watch my grandchildren, I got six grandbabies now. Love yeah. God. Yay. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. They're so beautiful, but they're all under the age of six. Mm -hmm. mm. And so as I watch them grow up and they are fascinated by life mm -hmm. sponges of energy they want to know they want to learn how does that work what does it do like that where that star come from right why does that frog squeeze on my finger everything uh, fascinates them mm -hmm. and then as I work with junior high kids and I work with high school kids we're teaching them how to ask questions again mm -hmm. we're, we're teaching them to dream again and mm. to believe in that again and to have an imagination mm. where does the wonder go I want to know, I'm, so I'm watching mine and I'm like, don't you dare take the wonder from those grandbabies. Let them ask the question mm -hmm. because I want to know who takes that away mm -hmm. because I think that's where the gap starts. Mm -hmm. We start telling them, sit down, pay attention, conform, memorize the answer, mm -hmm. get the grade, go to school, fit in the box. And that creates the gap right there. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because they're not fishing and they're not hunting and canning and looking at birds and watching the stars and changing the tire and learning about life. Mm. Yeah, so we, we actually, what you're saying, I think, is we contribute to that, that gap. One no, or one TV commercial, or <laughs> yeah. one do it this way and not that way. Exactly. Uh, at a time. One, one just a minute, don't ask, you'll learn. Mm -hmm. mm. Right? Yeah. One, just a minute, I'm busy, I can't, just a minute, I can't talk right now. And then they just quit asking. Yeah. Right? What a blessing. I mean, you have six grandbabies under the age of six, and I yes. can only imagine, I imagine you just pouring and pouring and pouring blessing into these young, <laughs> young souls. You know, I think that's what they're doing to me, <laughs> right? They're, they're doing that to me. But I think that's the joy of being a grandparent. Mm. Because when, we're, when I was a mom, I was so busy trying to be a good mom, mm -hmm. right? I wanted all my eyes dotted, my T's crossed in the dentist appointment and A's in science and good science projects and bows in their hair, right? I wanted, I wanted to be a perfect mom. And I think I missed the wonder. Mm. 
And I think that's what grandmothers get. I think we get the wonder. Yes. Right. Because yeah. I'm not responsible anymore yeah. for the algebra yeah. test. So was, <laughs> none of that is mine. And so I get the wonder. So I get tents in the living room and cupcakes at breakfast. And and where does cinnamon come from? And we get to find mm. out. Mm. I love it. Mm. Yeah. And like my mom says, you know, I can always send them home. <laughs> Absolutely. Spoiled. Yeah. Little sugar, maybe, but we're sending them home. <laughs> oh, my. So, Stacy, is there anything that you would like to comment on further or anything that you wished I'd asked you that I did not? Oh, you know, I, I love to have conversations with you, my friend. I could just talk to you all day. <laughs> right. Yeah. So here's how about I lay out a challenge, not necessarily a challenge, but a little mind candy for your audience. I, I would like to challenge them to see if they can take a moment and step back and find out what's underneath the music for them. Mm. When you learn to tap dance, you learn that you can't dance to the music because the music changes. Mm. It goes up, it goes down, it fades, it speeds up. Mm -hmm. But underneath, there's this one sound that never changes. And that keeps everything else in rhythm. And that's your dance partner. Mm -hmm. So who's your dance partner underneath all this music that's going on right now? Mm -hmm. Do you know? Who are you with no hat on? Who are you not in someone else's costume that they laid out for you for the day? Mm -hmm. But who are you underneath the music? Mm -hmm. Wow. And how do you keep the steps going when the music changes? I love yes. that. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank well, you have to know the dance, right? Yeah. Okay, have you ever been driving down the highway, listening to your favorite song on the radio? Mm-hmm. Music's turned up. You're a one-man concert, <laughs> best singer on the planet, right? <laughs> Rocking okay. out. Yes. And you hit that moment of white noise, and you go, oh. Mm. And you have a choice to make right then. You either change the station, or you keep singing your song. And in a minute, the white noise goes away and you're right on time and that concert continues, yes? Because you know your song. Mm. But white noise, conflict in your life, it's just white noise in your song. Mm. Right? And if you just keep singing, believe in it, just keep singing your song. In a minute, the white noise goes away and that song is right where it's supposed to be. Mm. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, I, I obviously didn't get to see you tap dance. I didn't get to see you uh, teach or as a professional dancer, but I feel like I've gotten a little bit of the dancer in you and the musician in you, because to be a tap dancer, you've got to be a really good musician. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Stacey. And so, so for our listeners, uh, I know they're going to want to get in touch with you. What's the best way to do that, Stacey? Well, you, I'm always on social media, right? I'm Stacy Owen Johnston on social media. I'm on LinkedIn as well, but I, I don't have a website. This whole internet world is a huge pivot for me. I didn't even want a debit card, but <laughs> so I'm working on it. I got, I got a group phone and I'm making a website right now and working on it, but I do have an email mm -hmm. and they can always reach me at enlightenup.stacyj, no E, just S-T-A-C-Y j at gmail.com and that's my enlighten up and they if you want to talk on our podcast if you want to share your journey if you have a hero that we need to know if you want to banter a word reach out to us at hero builder 2020 at gmail.com and let's chat all right excellent thank you so much stacy and again thank you for being here with us today and for enlightening us and enlightening up <laughs> the world thank you Thank you. Thank you so much. Bless you. So inspiring. I love all of Stacy's pearls of wisdom. Clearly, Stacy Johnston is a leader's leader. She makes a difference in her own life and in the lives of so many others in her family and throughout the world through her podcasts and as an internationally certified personal coach, consultant, speaker, and trainer. To learn more about Stacy's work, you can connect with her on Facebook. And that's facebook.com forward slash Stacy O dot Johnston. And Johnston is J O H N 
S T O N. So that's facebook.com forward slash Stacy S T A C Y Stacy O dot Johnston. You can also send her an email at enlightenup.stacyj at gmail.com. Now remember to look for her podcasts, Midweek Mind Candy, and also Uncaped Heroes. And you know what? I was a guest on both of those podcasts, so I just love that. Stacy's book, Caged No More, will be published very soon, so be sure to look for that as well. And that's Caged No More. All right, good stuff. Now, if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Gloria, and this is Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. We just heard from my very special guest, Stacy Johnston. Now, if you want to make your life count, if you want to be the change you seek, be sure to listen to this episode again and again, and be sure to tell somebody. You can find me right here on iTunes, Audible, Alexa, SoundCloud, iHeart, TuneIn, Spreaker.com, Talk Network Radio, and so many other places. Be sure to tune in again next time. Before I close today's show, I want to give a shout out to all the women, men, and our young people all around the world, because you know what? We are the ones. That's right. We are the ones we have been waiting for. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean is don't wait. Don't wait for somebody else to step up to make things happen. Because guess what? They might not step up. In fact, they might not even know you were there waiting for them to do something for you. But you can be the one. In fact, can I just tell you something? You are. You are the one. You are the one who can make a difference in your own life so that you can make a difference in the lives of others. Remember this, how you live is how you lead. It's how you do everything. If you happen to miss any part of this week's show, or if you missed last week's episode, you can simply download the recording and listen to it on the go at your convenience. Check us out at www.talknetworkradio.com forward slash hosts forward slash legacy living. That's talknetworkradio.com forward slash hosts forward slash legacy living. You can also find me and learn more about my work and legacy living. Make your life count by visiting the Gloria Burgess website or visit me on LinkedIn or Facebook. And that's facebook.com forward slash Dr. Gloria Burgess, PhD. Okay. And doctor is DR, my name, Gloria Burgess, PhD. Now, again, I want to thank each of you for tuning in to today's podcast, for allowing me to share a bit about my journey with what legacy living is all about. Not just living and learning, but living and learning and serving so that you make a difference in your own life and in the lives of others. It's about being on purpose every single day, 365, 24-7. Legacy living is a powerful way to make your life count. Once again, I want to thank you for joining me for today's show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, and this is Legacy Living Make Your Life Count. Please join me again next time right here on Talk Network Radio for another show of Legacy Living Make Your Life Count. Remember, don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what Legacy Living is all about. Have a fantastic day, and remember, make the days in your life count. 
God bless you. That's our show today. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess. I hope you'll join me again next time. Until then, don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what legacy living is all about. Here's to you. Have a fantastic day and be sure to make it a yes kind of day. Remember to celebrate the music of your life. Make the days in your life count.